Good morning, good morning, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and call us to order here at 730. We have a roll call, please. Adams? Here. Berlin? Here. Carrier? Chavez? Here. Deciani? Eckhoff? Here. Hart? Oh, that was good. Take care. Number Deciani. Take care. I don't know. Henry? Here. Mendrick? Rutledge? Here. Selman? Here. White? Yeah, okay, so can we have a motion and a second from the committee to allow member DeCiani to participate? He um, had child care issues, which we've been allowing for family. So so second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Any opposed? All right. Welcome, member DeCiani. Thanks, everybody. Um, no chairwoman's remarks this morning. Do we have any public comment? Okay. No public comment. Um, we need a Approval of the minutes for the Technology Committee's regular meeting Tuesday, September 14th. So moved. Second. Any comments, questions, or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Our colleague from the Sheriff's Office joined us. I want to make sure you. <laughs> Thank you. I think Pete was approving the minutes. It kind of sounded like he opposed, but uh, I think, yeah, I think he said aye, correct, Pete? Okay. I'm an aye. Like, after okay. you asked about all right, all perfect. Those, so. Thank you. All right, so moving on to so that item passed. Moving on to procurement requisitions, item A, amendment, correction of a scrivener's error for resolution TEP 155 20 to ratify an emergency procurement between the county and Sound Inc. to correct the total contract amount from $35,000 to $7,611. So this was some good old fashioned human error. No approval. Motion, DC, any? All right, we have a motion, and as we'll take Pete for the second. Any comments, questions, or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up, item seven is informational items and the motion to place on file 2021-80 recommendation for the approval of contract purchase order to Granius to provide software platform to send out the county's e-newsletters. This contract goes from October 26, 2021 through October 25th, 2022 for a total amount of $24,890. Okay. Any comments, questions, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, next up is our discussion item. I'm so excited. We are all excited about this. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw it over to Anthony to talk about our new website redesign. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, Good morning. committee members. So thank you for the opportunity to allow for me to provide an update on where we are with the website design project. When I first started three, a little over three months ago, I, uh, I identified this as the top project and I'm glad to say that we've made progress already and we're moving forward. Next slide. So first I'd like to start out with um, the project scope so that you have an understanding of our focus uh, and where we're heading with this particular project. So we're going to keep it very simple with this implementation. Uh, our goal is just to make the, our website faster, easier to navigate for all of our customers, and more uh, customer friendly and secure. That's it. So core website design, <clears throat> we want to make it responsive. Uh, we want to make sure it flows. So simple to navigate for anyone who goes there. Um, and uh, typically for most websites, you want to have you want to have information on your website that 80 percent of your customers get to quickly and uh, find what they're looking for and then move on you don't want to make it complex so they spend a, a few minutes trying to buy things so in this website that's what we're going to do is keep it simple uh keep it clear and keep it clean information has to be accessible and and every page that we have and it has to be intuitive, right? It has to be a website that people understand and can figure out quickly. Um, we're going to make sure that the DuPage County branding is distinct and uh, throughout the entire website. It gets very confusing for uh, users when they go to a website. They click on one, they see one design, they click on a, a, a page and they see a completely different design, right? It, it just throws them for a complete loop. In this particular implementation, we're going to make sure that it's consistent throughout. We have to make sure that it's fully ADA compliant. A lot of components of our existing website is ADA compliant, but it's not 100%. We're going to make sure it's 100% ADA compliant. We're going to make sure that we have dynamic, dynamic content 
and that our content management solution is easy for our users to use, our internal users to use, when they need to update the content, the content that pertains to their area. Uh, their area. Um, we also will make sure that um, we implement new content. There's a lot of stagnant content that's been out there for a long time that needs to be cleaned up and removed or deleted. So we're not going to migrate any content. We're going to make sure that new content is implemented so it's it's thorough, it's up to date, and people get the right content. We're also going to make it web and mobile friendly. So the majority of the people who go to any website uh, uses a mobile device nowadays. So they don't use laptops and computers like before. They, they use a iPhone or Android device so that it's quick and easy for them to access. So we have to make sure the pages render so they can see everything and be able to do anything that they would do using a PC, they can do through a mobile device. We're also gonna make sure that it's, it's secure. There's a lot of cyber attacks out there that are bringing down websites. Um, just as an example, Cook County, Clerk of the Circuit Court, they've been down for, I think, over a month now. I think four months. Four months, four months, months. <laughs> four now. Yeah. After being hacked, uh, they're having a really hard time getting their website up and running and finding the content that was apparently either deleted or they had some issues with. So we get, we have to make sure that security is a top priority and we will. We have to make sure that it's high performing and that it's also gonna be hosted externally. That gives us a lot of uh, 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 leverage. It helps us with disaster recovery. If something happens with our service here, it's in the cloud. Usually hosted solutions are more redundant. They have more uh, hardware to use to throw at it or memory to make things faster, so on and so forth. So we, it's going to be a hosted platform. And then last but not least, I think this is important. Uh, citizen engagement is important. We need to figure out better ways to improve how to engage our users um, you know, when they go to come to our site. So we're going to have a design person help us with that. Also includes translation of other languages, multiple languages, and then some kind of call to action. Uh, should be right in the front of the button. So where do I go to pay a particular bill? Where do I go to look for this information? So that's the scope. The timeline uh, will be in five phases. So we are projecting 15 to 18 months at this point. Um, we will have a better understanding of how long it'll take after we select uh, an actual design and implementation vendor. So depending on their product, depending on their experience with implementations, it could take three to six months uh, longer. Um, I really believe that we'll be able to um, uh, do something within a reasonable amount of time. And I want to give an actual time frame of what that is until I have a better understanding of full scope. But right now we're in phase one, uh, which is really collecting as much information as possible. Um, we've already started our scope. But we're also, and I'll talk about it in a second, we're going to uh, do surveys so that we get uh, feedback from uh, all of our current users, including the public. Then phase two, we're going to work on the procurement process. Um, and we've selected a uh, out external procurement service that will help our procurement department with this particular implementation because it's IT focused. Then we're going to focus on the, the full uh, design based on all the information that we've gathered from scope plus industry best practice. So the vendor that we're using to help us procure this solution also has done it before and worked with other uh, government organizations. So they're going to help us figure out the best way to implement it for a county of our size and scope. And then we're going to develop it and work on integrations with other systems if we need to bring data to the website, we have to create these integrations that help us do that. And then we're gonna test, test, test to make sure it works before we launch it and then train the people on content and our internal people on whatever solution that helps them um, support it moving forward. So the current implementation date we have is in February of 2023. I think that that, that may change. Don't quote me on it, but I think that it, it actually may be sooner than that. Next slide. All right, and then so these are our high level next steps. We're going to receive uh, ARPA funding approval, we're hoping, uh, from uh, our board members soon. Um, but in the meantime, we're moving forward with the planning part. We are in the process of issuing user surveys. We're going to issue to the public, we're going to issue to department heads, and we're going to uh, issue to electeds. 
to get their input and feedback on how to uh, best implement this new web uh, website. Um, we are in the process of conducting a site inventory to make sure we are fully aware of what's on there now so that we ensure those things that are critical go uh, or move to the new website. We're going to complete um, the project scope uh, very soon and then uh, yeah, hopefully that'll allow us to do the last item, which is to issue an RFP via a external uh, co-op solution called Marketplace City. So that's our next steps. All right, so I want to talk about Marketplace City really quickly, then I'll open up to questions. So Marketplace City is a procurement co-op solution. Uh, next slide. Essentially, uh, what they do is take, they only work on the IT implementations, but they have a process that speeds everything up. It also is a little more thorough than sometimes uh, government uh, procurement processes are, because that's all that they do. And they've kind of perfected it use, uh, working with other government organizations. So they're going to help us source the technology, validate that it's the right technology for us, then help us with the procurement process. All right, next slide. So Marketplace, so that you know, is at no cost to us. The um, solution is based on 7% fee that the awardee pays only if they're selected. So only if we complete the actual uh, sourcing of the device. So if we decide at the very last minute this isn't working out for us, we pull out, no charge to us at all. So, but if we select it, the, the company uh, that is selected will pay that 7%. And then and I'll explain in a second why that's not a big concern to us. Second thing is it's a very transparent and a, a, a very speedy uh, process. So typically this uh, procurement process is uh, on average about a hundred days. Um, data shows that government procurement uh, processes takes about 272 days. So it almost cuts it in, into a third. So that'll help us a, a lot. Throughout the entire process, this organization works with our procurement department to provide documents, to share information, uh, to, to just be very transparent. It's a very open and transparent process. Um, from time to time, I'll bring in information to present to you just to show you where we are in the process, uh, just as an FYI. So by doing that, it also increases the speed of the implementation, which uh, a lot of us uh, don't realize, but it helps sellers save on cost. So when sellers have to wait two or three months and have either resources wait on the bench until a, a solution is selected, that's money, right, that they spend. So we can get them to a solution quicker. It helps them save money and then helps us save money in the long run. So the last part is government validation, which uh, helps us with the 7%. So what Marketplace does is they look through contracts that have already been implemented by that vendor throughout the entire nation, in some cases, the entire world. They compare the size and magnitude of the implementation to ours, and then they compare pricing. So if it's spot on, then um, in most cases, they just validate that it's the right pricing and it's low as, as it is. If it's too high, then they help us go in and negotiate to get it lower, to you know, lower and where it needs to be. 7% also um, uh, is captured in the, um, the second thing that I talked about, which is the, the speed. So a lot of vendors, if they can save money there, they take 7% and just use that from where they've already allocated. Because at the beginning of an RFP solicitation, they have to project how much it's going to cost them to go through the process. All right, next slide. All right, so uh, these I won't spend a lot of time on, but um, I'll send out the deck so that you can have it. But these are clarifications. Does this replace procurement? It absolutely does not. You have to use Marketplace City for all IT sourcing projects. You don't. You can pick and choose which things you want to use them for when it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, we don't use them. Uh, who picks the vendor? We do. So they're not involved in, in that at all. They're involved in lining up the process, identifying uh, solid proposals, uh, checking out boxes for us and to give us the information to make the, a sound decision. And then will it comply with other procurement rules? Absolutely. Um, they have to adhere to our procurement uh, processes and work within our, our procurement process. So um, it's not a a new process is not their own process. They, the only part that is there is the speed part, which is really 
them working with the vendors, pulling the information and getting things to us quickly. All right, next slide. And live, this is the last slide. Just want to highlight these are vendors that they're working with over 225 local government partners. And here are some of the, at the very top, the ones that are close to us. Next slide. All right, that's it. Any questions? Just a quick question. Sure. So the marketplace.city, that doesn't really have anything to do with end users of our that are clicking into our system. It's basically just all the vendors that are coming to okay. draw contracts. From You're them. absolutely okay. right. Spot on. Just so clarify. It's really just dealing with the vendors, collecting the proposals, vetting the proposals, putting it into a package that our uh, RFP committee can review and consume quickly and make a decision. Great. I know we're still early in the process. The only recommendation that I'd like to make is that we have some engaging video content, maybe, okay. because I think oftentimes that's so lacking, especially in government sites. But I think it's a great way to engage with the public is if we can have some stuff flowing in occasionally. So when people hop on the site initially, they actually, you know, learn something or get engaged in something that maybe they didn't know the county did. So that would just be my recommendation as we start the process that we keep that in mind. Thank you very much. And I didn't make it clear up there, but uh, board members will also receive a survey as well, right. so we can get feedback from you. Any other comments or questions? One of your first slides said distinct branding or something, and, mm -hmm. and it's early, and I don't have 2020, and I thought it said district, and I kind of got a little excited. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Well, I'm sorry, one last thing I didn't mention that I have to throw out there, and uh, Madam Chair mentioned it to me Friday, and I forgot to add it here. But we are moving to dupageco.gov as part of, I'm sorry, dupagecounty.gov. Yeah, oh, page, oh, yeah. dupagecounty.gov. Oh, so the oh, point okay. is, we're moving away from .org. We really aren't a .org, we're, we're .gov, yeah. and we should be. Right? Yeah. So, uh, as part of this process, uh, we're going to start some of that uh, early by March of uh, 30, uh, March 30th of 2022. Uh, we have to do that because of uh, election laws so we have to help the, the election team on that but uh, the entire uh, website will move to a dot gov when we go live with this uh, we can't keep it at the co instead of county <laughs> one, uh, one more thing to key in we, we have the base county dot gov uh, uh, yeah, reserved uh, right now. there's specific uh, wording that you have to use when you apply um, for it and so we did get DuPage County because normally it's much different, but it's because we're the only DuPage in the entire country. Uh, right. So they allowed us DuPage County. Okay. I'm very excited about the .gov thing, and I know many others are here too, especially our residents who go to a .org and get confused sometimes. Um, any other comments or questions on the website? You know, we'll be hearing a lot more as we move through this process. Any old business? I just have one item, which is a few minutes ago, I'd ask that we get BCBB on the current website. And I know um, we're transitioning, but I just was wondering if I could get some follow up to see if you need anything from BCBB to get that added. I know we're not really adding things now, okay. but if we can until we transition, that would be great. So okay. I'll follow up with uh, Debbie DC, who's uh, our web services manager. Okay. I'll provide you a little bit of hope. Awesome. Thank you. Any other old business? Any new business? Seeing none, without objection, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.